Hi everybody, uh, today we will be covering carbon compounds. Um, if you're looking in your book, it would be section chapter 3, section 1. We're going to look at kind of the importance of carbon. Why is it important? And carbon, uh, anything that contains carbon uh, is known as an organic compound. And you can see here some examples of what that would might look like, where you can see the carbon atom in this location here, 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 and again in this molecule and in this molecule. You can see it's bonded differently in each one, which makes it, makes it unique. Organic compounds, that word simply means that it contains carbon atoms. And basically what carbon atoms are able to do is that they form covalent bonds with other carbon atoms. So to review just a little bit for you, covalent bonds um, just uh, share electrons. So this portion here, if you feel like you need to write that in, covalent bonds share electrons. And if you haven't had physical science yet, you'll get to that a little bit more uh, in that class. And so covalent bonds, when they share electrons, they have an um, even distribution of charge. Um, the molecule itself does not have any charge. And they're just um, happy by sharing the electrons to make stable outer energy levels. So carbon will bond with itself or it will bond with things like nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen, which you can see in this example of four different molecules here. Carbon will readily covalently bond and the reason behind this is that carbon, when you look at carbon's um, valence electrons, which are the outermost electrons. I'll write that on here for you. Some of you um, have had physical science already and you'll recognize that term. And those of you that have not had it yet will be covering this a lot in that class. Uh, I spend about nine weeks on chemistry, basic chemistry. So valence electrons are just the outer electrons. And this is shown here by these dots. And the Lewis dot structure, that's what this is called, will show that we have four outer electrons. Every atom wants to be at eight outer electrons. So there's an open spot here, an open spot here, here, and here. And those open spots are places that carbon can share electrons. So if you notice in this picture where carbon is bonded in a ring with hydrogens on the outside, you can see some carbons will have a double bond between the two carbons. Sometimes there will be single bonds, and then those will bond then with hydrogen on the outside. Sometimes carbon can have triple bonds as well. And so carbon is a very unique atom, and due to this uniqueness, it will... Um, bond readily and uh, it is very it's vital in living things it's what makes us living things so if we look at carbon molecules um, we start with something simple which is called a monomer and that's a small molecule and if you look at the break down the word mono might make you think of single and so it's a single small molecule Polymers are made up of many monomers, so poly here being many. And then macromolecules are just really large polymers. So macro, looking at that really big molecule. Um, and these three terms you'll see as we go through the next few slides. So how do we make polymers and how do we go from polymers back to monomers so condensation reaction is our first reaction we're going to look at today and this is a chemical reaction it takes monomers and it forms polymers so it links small to large okay links small to large and the way it does this, if we look at the word condensation, condensation should make you think of water. And when something condenses, we think of water droplets. So here we have condensation reaction being water droplets that have um, been formed. So in this reaction, 
we have one water molecule that is being removed. And you can see that in the picture here. We have glucose, which is a monomer, and we have fructose, which is a monomer. They are, they have their own chemical structure here. And what will happen is we have a hydrogen from the glucose molecule, and we have a hydroxide, this OH, from the fructose molecule. And they form together to make H2O. So we get right here, and that's hard to see there, but we get H2O that gets removed. And once that's removed, we have this empty spot. And that empty spot needs to be filled, and so they will bond together. Glucose and fructose will come together and make sucrose, which is just table sugar. Okay, so again, condensation reaction, water, a water molecule is removed, it leaves an open spot for a bond to happen, and so the two monomers link together. So looking at it just a little bit deeper to explain that a little more, larger molecules are being formed because we remove a hydrogen ion and we remove a hydroxide ion from the two monomers. That produces H2O, and it leaves an open space for this bond to happen. That open space has to be filled, and so the two monomers link together. I'll show you that in a little review video here in a moment. So the opposite of condensation reaction is hydrolysis. So again, we have hydro, which should make you think of water. But in this case, instead of removing water, we're going to add water. And when we add a water molecule, it's going to break apart the bond that we had just created, and it's going to separate the two, or the larger molecule, into the two monomers. So it is a chemical reaction. It breaks down large polymers, and the water molecule is added here, water molecule, added. Once it's added, the OH goes with one side, the H goes with the other side. It breaks this bond right here, and we see that we now have glucose and glucose. In this case, it was two monomers of glucose that made the uh, disaccharide maltose. Okay, so two types of reactions, condensation reaction, and hydrolysis. Condensation reaction removes water, which then allows two monomers to join together. Hydrolysis adds water, which breaks apart a polymer and allows us to go back to our simple monomers. We'll look at a quick review. And this review is a video explanation. As you can see here, let me enlarge it for you. We'll start the animation. Okay, so um, you can go back and kind of replay that as you need to. This will lead us into our next section, which is going to look at the molecules for life, proteins, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, and fats, and we will cover that in our next lesson.